Hi guys. So this is problem for 40, problem 38 from the section, uh, from chapter 4, on the section on mesh currents. And in this problem, we have a 135 volt independent voltage source. Um, this is 3 ohms, 2, 20, 1, 4, and 5. And we have a uh, dependent voltage source with value 10 I delta, and its value is controlled by the current through this I delta, which is the current through the 3 ohm resistor. Okay, so what we're looking for is the power dissipated by the 20 ohm resistor, and we're supposed to use mesh currents, although this problem is solvable either way by no voltage or mesh currents, but since this problem is on the section on mesh currents, we'll be using the mesh method to solve it. Um, so, power, we have two choices. It's either going to be V squared over R or I squared over um, V squared over R or I squared R. And since we're using the mesh method, we'll probably end up using I squared R. If we were using no voltage, we can just simply take this voltage minus this voltage, and that would be V squared over R. But the mesh method, we're going to take this current minus this current and square it times resistance in order to find the power dissipated by that particular resistor. Okay, so let's get started. So the mesh method says that in a closed loop, the sum of all the voltage drops will equal zero. That's KVL. So that means I'm going to take a look at, um, and a mesh is, is something that is closed. In other words, there is, um, it's not connected to anything else. It's pretty, count, it's pretty intuitive, actually. So this is clearly a mesh. This is clearly another mesh. And this is clearly another mesh because it's not open to something else. Um, so I'm going to arbitrarily name this current in this mesh I sub A. This current I'm going to call I sub B. And this current I'm going to call I sub C. So um, even though it's called the mesh current method, be very careful because it's a current, we're looking for unknown currents, but it's really, we're using the application of Kirchhoff's voltage law in order to find it. So it's an application of KVL, whereas the node voltage, which has the word voltage in it, we're using mesh currents. Or not mesh currents, but um, KCL, Kirchhoff's current laws do that. So um, let's start with mesh A. So we're going to build equations that say, um, these voltage drops must equal zero. So starting here, take the where your voltage, where your mesh goes in, that's the sign that you're going to take. So the sign goes in at the negative terminal, and that comes straight from the passive sign convention. So passive sign convention says that positive current, well, I'll let you defer that. But anyways, so this current goes enters the negative node, so that gives me negative 135 volts plus is my, as my first voltage drop. So be careful not to write voltage and then times IA because you're panicked. Because remember, always take inventory of what term you're writing. Power or current times voltage is a power term. So if you've got a power term, it makes no sense in the context of KBL. So always take a look at your each term that it makes sense. And always keep in mind that we're applying KVL. So um, Voltage is current times resistance, so this second term in this mesh is 3 times IA. That is a voltage term. And then this here is going to be the next, this here, oops, pardon me. I'm just being a little decaffeinated right now. I feel like I need another coffee. This term is going to be the net current, right? It's really I delta. And I delta is really IB minus IA. But since I'm defining the voltage drops in this, and I've defined IA as a positive current going in this direction, this is going to be 3 ohms times the net effect, which is going to be IA minus I sub B. That's that net current. The next voltage drop I come across in this mesh is the 20, across the 20 ohm resistor, which is 20 times I sub A minus I sub C. And then the final one that I come across is across this 2 ohm resistor plus IA, 2 IA. 
2, I, A, and all those have to equal 0. So now I'm just going to quickly do a spot check, make sure every term I have is voltage. Voltage, current times resistance is voltage. Resistance times current is voltage. Resistance times current is voltage. Everything that I have in this equation is a voltage term. So I'm happy that I didn't make any mistakes or satisfied for now. So now I'm going to do what I did, exactly the same thing as what I did in the node voltage method, which is to gather all of my um, variables and then gather their corresponding coefficients in there because I'm going to use my calculator to solve the system of simultaneous equations. So this is my number one equation. I have an unknown of IA and it has this occurrence here with coefficient 3. It also has coefficient 20 here. And lastly, it has a coefficient of 2. So those are my coefficients for IA. For IB, I have negative 3. And that is it. And then IC, I have negative 20. And then for constant, I have 135. Okay, let me do a double check because, as you guys know, I am infamous for doing it right on paper, but getting typos and all kinds of other nonsense on the board. 3, 22, minus 3, minus 21, 35. Okay, so that's my double check and it is correct. Now, my number 2 equation is going to come from I sub B. So mesh at I sub B. Mesh at IB. My first voltage drop is across here. That's going to be 3 ohms times IB minus IA. Plus, over here, 5 times IB. Plus, this is my last voltage drop in this mesh, 4 times IB minus IC. All of that has to equal zero. Okay, resistance times current, voltage, resistance times current, voltage, resistance times current, voltage. So these are all sums of voltage drops in a closed mesh. I'm happy that I wrote my equation right. So now, again, group all your coefficients and variables together. IA in my number two equation is going to have negative three right there. And then IB plus IB Coefficients for IB is 3 right there, 5 right there, negative 4 right there. And then IC, I got a negative 4 right there. That's equal to 0. I have no constants in that equation. So double check negative 3. 3 plus 1 minus 4. Negative 4 to 0. Good. And then my final mesh, which is the I sub C mesh. So, mesh at I C. That's going to give me, my first voltage drop is 20 I C plus minus I A. And then here I've got 4 I C minus I B. Plus, first sign I see is this sign right here. So it's going to be plus 10 I delta. But what is I delta really? We talked about it earlier. I delta is this current defined to go in this direction, which means it's IB minus IA. So I'm going to write that as IB minus IA. And then my last one is this voltage drop crosses one ohm resistor, but that's going to be one IC. So plus one IC. I have no constants, or excuse me, but that's going to be plus zero. Is equal to zero. So my third mesh equation, all my IAs, this has a negative 20 right there. Negative 20 and a negative 10 right here. Plus IB. So IB is going to have a negative 4 coefficient here and a 10 coefficient there. Um, 
And then I see I have 20 coefficient there, and then 4 coefficient on the second term, and then a 1 coefficient there, and I have no constants, so it's all equal to 0. Double check, negative 10, negative 20, negative 4, plus 10, 20, plus 4, plus 1, all equals to 0. Okay, so now we have a system of three simultaneous equations, three equations and three unknowns. So, use your simultaneous equation solver. Choose three equations, three unknowns, and then put in your, co your coefficients. 3 plus 20, 3 plus 20 plus 2, negative 3. Negative 20 is equal to 135, and then negative 3, 3 plus 5 plus minus 4, negative 4, 0, negative 20 minus 10, negative 4 plus 10, 20 plus 4 plus 1 equals 0, solve, and something went wrong, so let me try again, table set. Well, something is definitely wrong because, okay, like 25 minus 3 minus 20, 135. Minus 3, oh, here's my mistake. No, that's right. Negative, negative 4 is equal to 0. Negative 20, negative 30, negative 4. 6, 5, 24, 5. So, hmm. Double check. 3, 20, and 2, negative 3, negative 20, 135. Negative 3, oops, IB. So my IB, I have negative 3. I don't know, I erased my equation, but I apparently have a typo. Ah, I'm horrible at typos. So if that should be a plus, and then minus 4, okay. So now, let me try again. I'm glad you guys call me out when I make typos because I don't really like that because I don't want to do more harm, but it's kind of hard to keep things straight. Okay, so that was it. So that should have been a plus four. So that gives me um, IA. That gives me IA is equal to 64.8 amps. IB is equal to 39 amps, and IC is equal to 68.4 amps. Um, double check. Okay, so then this current is going to be IA minus IC. So then P20 is going to be I squared over R, or I squared R, excuse me. So that's going to be 64.8 amps minus 68.4 amps, quantity squared, times 20. When you do that, and again, let me make sure that that's correct. So I'm going to go 64.8 minus 68.4, square that, times 20. And you should get 259.2 watts. 259, yep, yeah. So that's 259.2 watts, and that's the answer to problem number 38. All right, you guys, make sure to share your videos with, share this video with your classmates if you got help, because then maybe discovery will lead to a more interactive channel. That is my theory.